This is Clybourne Park, written by Bruce Norris, and um, uh, takes place in a living room of a house. The first act is in 1959, and then the second act is 2009, same living room, different world. The home you see right now is um, not much in evidence 50 years later. And so they're sort of looking at like um, where we were then and where we are now, and what is similar and what is different. 1959, the day is the day that uh, my husband and I are packing up to move, which uh, moving brings up lots of emotions. And I play the maid to the, um, to the family that lives on Clapborn um, Street. And in the second um, part of the play, I play the great niece of the maid who worked in this very house. In each act, you sort of have this, this conflict between the people who have control of the neighborhood and are already well established in the neighborhood and people who want in. It's about race and real estate, which I think is a great way to sum it all up. Every actor it plays a character in the first act and then a different character in the second act. In a certain way, it's almost like doing two plays, two very well written plays. Between the two acts, you see uh, lots of um, echoes or you know, a lot of um, a lot of strings sort of passing from one act to the other that aren't so uh, explicit but are, are kind of resonant. The first act really, even structurally, is very much written like a period piece. I mean, you you know, the the um, lights rise and, and the audience is given this sort of treat of, wait, I thought this was a new play. I didn't know this was a revival of, you know, such and such by Tennessee Williams or something. And then in the second act, we move to 2009, and it's a, a semicircle of six people chatting. Structurally, it is much more a contemporary landscape without really story to follow. Um, it's more about sort of opinions and characters and true selves getting revealed. Things are brought up that I would never imagine that I would even witness the conversation, you know, that conversation being had. And so I think it's thrilling. I mean, I think it's literally, it sends thrills through your body in that way. Like afterwards, you can tell people are like, wow, they witnessed something that they didn't think that they would. I personally think that the play is so wonderful, so intelligent, and so brave. It's like just incredible, and not to mention hilarious, so. <laughs> I think it's about uh, uh, who we think we are, what our beliefs are, who thinks they're right when they may be wrong, or even sometimes what is right and what is wrong. I think it's about um, integration, not just racially and uh, within our society, but psychologically. And how when people don't integrate themselves psychologically because they don't want to or they're unable to, they or you or we end up projecting things on all these other people. And there's always someone that you're shutting out or identifying as the other or separating yourself from. And to me, that's the thing that I think is so exciting about the play. On stage, it really provides a vehicle for an important conversation and to do it in a way that is unfettered um, by, by what's proper or what's socially acceptable. Um, and so as far as the play is concerned, I think that really gives it its, gives it its engine. We can talk about that stuff candidly and, and as an ensemble explore the questions in a way that's safe. I just think people listen better when they're laughing actually and it's it's such a funny play. Um, I think it actually opens you up to hear some of the more difficult things that are being addressed because you're laughing. It's a conversation through the whole room including the audience, you know, everyone's involved. I think it's a really uh, great play and I think people should come see it. Mm -hmm.